Lord, I'm taking off my Baptist lenses. I'm going to read the Bible as, as, as if I just got saved. And that's when it became uh, real to me that there was more of God. And shortly thereafter, I experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and everything changed. So take, walk us through that. What happened when you got baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because this, yeah. this is a big deal. It's a huge deal. I mean, it's a big deal that it happened, but it's a big deal that a uh, Southern Baptist pastor, I mean, that's going to that's gonna change a lot of things at your church. Oh, it, it did. <laughs> and, and I was pastoring one of the fastest growing Southern Baptist churches in the state right. of Georgia at that time. And, and so I, I just got so hungry and thirsty for the supernatural, but not just the supernatural, just more of Jesus. Just saying, Lord, I want to see what you did in the book of Acts and the Gospels manifest in my church. And so it culminated in a, a prayer meeting that I went to. I went to a Pentecostal prayer meeting, and that's the last place that a Southern Baptist pastor should be. And it was at that point that they laid their hands on me. And everything, Gene, that I had ever preached against, in fact, I even mocked speaking in tongues. I forbade it at my church. I said, stay away from these crazy people, you know, these charismatics. But everything that I preached against happened to me in that moment. Wow. And my life forever changed. I remember falling back in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, thinking in my natural mind, my wife's going to kill me and my deacons are going to fire me. That's what I was thinking. And uh, my wife didn't kill me, but I ended up getting dismissed from my church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. You, you've been released from your uh, pastorate mm -hmm. there. And so what did you do next? I planted a church and uh, people came from all over Georgia to be filled with the Holy Spirit because they thought, okay, here's a pastor that has an education and he has a reputation. Right. The Lord is using him. And they came from everywhere to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we planted multiple churches throughout the North Georgia area uh, with the emphasis on the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Did you ever wonder that maybe you had snapped and gone over the deep end or did the wrong thing or maybe this wasn't real? Did you ever have doubt? Not really because the, the impact of the Holy Spirit was so, it was like night and day to me. Uh, I, I love the Lord, but when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I fell in love with Him. And the scriptures just literally would leap off the page. And I'd say, I've read that a thousand times, but now it was just like rhema to me. And yeah, so I never doubted, did I do the right thing? Uh, I, it's, it's just been that life changing for me. All right, so, so let's dive. See, the point I want to make there, and you said it perfectly, is you said 90%, it was great. We cannot throw out uh, it takes the whole body. I know our, our founder, Kenneth Copeland, said, and I like to quote this just a few years ago, he said, uh, it's time for the streams of ministry to come together and that we have to understand we all have a part to play. This is part of the body. We all have a place. So, and I'm glad we, that's exactly what you said because it's real easy to get off and talk about bad about this and about that and you'll miss the whole point. Mm -hmm. You'll miss it. So, thank you for that. So, but, now, uh, to where we are right now in 2010, I took over a church that had some problems and that uh, I came out of the church that I planted and then this church said, hey, can you help us transition through these difficult days? I said, absolutely, I'd love to. So I, I became their pastor. But four or five years into that, Gene, I'm dying as a pastor. My church is diminishing. It's plateaued. Um, you know, the crisis that they went through was having its toil and effect. And I thought I could revive it and I thought I could save it. And it was, it was like air leaving a balloon, people leaving our church. Then we stabilized in, as a very small church. Uh, we're in a 140,000 square foot building. And you can imagine having 150 people in a sanctuary that seats 1,200 people. Right. Uh, so the devil played with my emotions. Sure. Your failure, if you were a better communicator, if you were a stronger leader, God would use you. You need to leave. You're destroying this place. And it was in that context, Gene, that uh, the Lord led me to Psalm 27, verse 8, where the Bible says, God, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face will I seek. And it reminded me, and I looked at that, and, it, and David had lost the face of God. Mm. God had to remind David, the most powerful man on the planet, the strongest, you know, military on the planet. He said, David, you've lost my face. Would you seek it again? 
And it dawned on me, Jean, at that moment in 2018, I had lost the face of God. I was acquainted with His hand, His promises, His blessings. We were having good church, but I thought, if I have lost the face of God, how many people in my congregation too? Break, break that down a little deeper. What does that mean, you'd lost the face of God? Well, it, when I would come and I prayed to Him, it was basically, I would ask Him for things, good things. And it's not wrong to ask. We, we're, we're encouraged to ask. But it was always like I had a list. Here's my needs. Here's what I'd like for you to do for me. And, and so I was acquainted with the hand of God. And, and we know as parents, if our kids always come to us and they just want something from us, asking us for things, but never sit down and talk to us and say, hey, I just want to let you know you're the greatest parent in the world. You know, that type of thing. And, and just wanting to, hey, how's your day doing? When our children do that, it opens up our heart sure. to them, to bless them, to pour out to them unexpected things. And so when I lost the face of God, I did it in the midst of ministry, in the midst of being a parent, being a husband, uh, being a counselor. And I realized, God, I ha I've gone after your hand, but from this point on, I'm not going to ask you for anything for this season. And all I'm going to do is pursue your face. Whatever you want, that's what I want. And so at that moment, Gene, I called our church to a 21-day fast. And we said, we're going to do three things. We're going to seek three things. We're not going to ask God for anything personally. We're going to seek His face. We're going to cry out for His glory. And then thirdly, we're going to say, God, anything in us that grieves you, that offends you, I want you to reveal it to me and to us, and we'll repent of it. So for 21 days without food, just water and juices, our church sought the face of God, cried out for His glory, and got real and said, Lord, anything, my entertainment choices, my attitudes, the unforgiveness in my heart, anything that grieves you, would you reveal it? And for 21 days, that's what we did. And two weeks into that pursuit, I'm walking across our platform, and I see my baptistry empty, no water in it. But for eight seconds, I saw it full of water and a strip of fire on it. Now, I'm Baptist. We don't have visions. <laughs> okay? right. You know, if we're, right. if we're fasting and we have a vision, it's of a hamburger or something. Sure. You know, it, it's, okay. not of, it's not supernatural. But I saw the first vision I ever saw in my life. My baptismal pool, empty, full of water, with a strip of fire on it, two and a half to three feet wide from front to back. Now, this is... And what year was this? This is 2018. 2018. 2018. I see this. As, as, as it is as real to me as I'm looking at you right and now. And this is in the middle of your, your message? No, in the middle of a time of prayer oh, and of fasting. Prayer. Yeah. Okay. I'm fasting and I'm praying. I'm walking across our platform and I see that baptismal pool. Wow. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say to me, Todd, I'm going to baptize people with Holy Spirit and fire. Mm. Had no idea what it meant. Now, as a good Baptist, I thought my new converts were going to have an incredible time in the water that they'll never backslide. And two weeks later, Gene, two weeks later, the glory of God falls in our sanctuary. Literally, the weight, the kibbutz of God enters our sanctuary. And ever since that moment, we've been in revival and baptized over 33,000 people from literally all over the world. And they're encountering the Holy Spirit fire in their immersion. Absolutely remarkable.